Hello everyone, in case you missed it, or have just been ignoring me for the better part of a year, I'm writing a book. I mean, you shouldn't have missed it, because I've been talking about it a lot. The book is called 147 Things, My User's Guide to the Universe from Black Holes to Belly Buttons. In the run-up to the release of this piece of literary genius, I'm making special content to explain little snippets in 147 seconds or less. Today's snippet is a video-friendly version of Thing 134, entitled Great! You can time travel. That doesn't give you the excuse to start stealing children. Picture this. Somehow you found yourself in possession of a time machine, and rather than do something brilliant like save the last dodo, you come up with the harebrained schemes to steal a child from our early ancestors. You're an ass, obviously, but you're nothing if not thorough, so you ask yourself, what is the furthest back I can travel and return with a newborn that I can raise as a fully functioning member of society without any physical or cognitive evidence that this child is in fact really, really old? Well, the species of hominid that we belong to, Homo sapiens sapiens, are thought to be around 200,000 years old. You could probably pilfer a prehistoric child from this far back, but it would only be anatomically modern, meaning that it would look a lot like the other kid in the playground of 2017, but that's all. It wouldn't act the same. You would likely never manage to teach this child to speak, and complex reasoning may always be out of his or her reach. We know this because bones and stones and tools show us that it wasn't until around 50,000 years ago that we started getting really good at making stuff and killing things. It's around this time that scientists believe we became behaviourally modern. Making tools requires excellent problem solving skills, whilst hunting woolly mammoths and farming and sharing stories and knowledge takes some fairly complex communication that only more recent brains could manage. Therefore, prehistoric baby smugglers should venture back no further than 50,000 years, but they should also exercise caution. I mean, I mean, what if you turned out to be one of this kid's descendants and by depriving it of the chance to procreate, you halted your own genetic ancestry? When you arrive back to 2017, you just wouldn't exist and then the baby would be left to fend for itself. That's cruel. <laughs> also, there weren't loads of us around back then, so that child lineage could actually account for quite a large chunk of the global population. You could prevent me from existing and I like being a thing. What if this child would go on to invent something major like the wheel and when you arrived home, you found that we were like still dragging things uphill? You couldn't just take the baby back and pretend like it never happened because if the wheel hasn't been invented, you can bet your bottom dollar that the time machine is a little way off yet. And what if your adopted baby held a genetic mutation that actually made it immune from some awful virus that would wipe all of humanity out between 50,000 years ago and now? You will have single-handedly been responsible for the lack of protection and ultimate death of the entire human race, you know? Anyway, on that note, there you go. That was thing 134 from my book 147 Things, which comes out on October 5th. I very much hope you liked this video, and if you did, guess what? You can totally pre-order the book and get your own signed copy on October 5th, you lucky devil you. The link to do so is in the description box down below, and there's also other bits and bobs on there. And stay tuned, because I'll be bringing you more information as it comes, like book tours and signings and giveaways and all that sort of stuff. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you liked this video, and I'll see you soon. Bye.